Good evening. Once again, we thank everyone for joining us for our midweek Bible study. My name is Minister Adrian Pickens. I'm the Associate Minister of Mount Gill Missionary Baptist Church in Conway, Arkansas, where my pastor is the Reverend Forrest C. Cooper. Thank you all for coming and sharing with us as we study the Word of God. The title of this week's lesson is Sharing Love. Our Bible background and printed text for this week comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 through chapter 5, verse 11. Uh, the devotional reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Uh, this week, as we study this lesson, we want to explore the Jerusalem church's practice and witness of communal sharing. We want to repent of any idolatrous attachment to material goods. And then we want to create a plan to increase our giving for the common good. Uh, so uh, right off the bat, we see that this lesson is about sharing, it's about love, and it's about unity. And so as we study these scriptures, keep those things in mind. Uh, the key verse for this week is Acts chapter 4, verse 32. And it reads, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. The background, when we look at uh, the text, chapter 4, uh, really in chapter 3, Peter and John uh, starts off by they were headed to the temple and they healed a lame man that was waiting for alms or begging for alms at the, at the entrance of the temple. Um, and so Peter and John healed them. They allowed themselves to, to, to sacrifice uh, their talents. They sacrificed uh, and allowed themselves to be used by the Holy Spirit. And in the power of God, they were able to perform a miracle and hear, heal this man that was lame. Uh, after they were allowed themselves to be used and sacrificed, then there was a testimony that took place, uh, the testimony of the power of God. They began to tell the people what God had allowed them to do through his power. And so in that testimony, there was a... Uh, 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 those that were in the crowd that begin to believe and then also begin to worship. And uh, so we want to make sure that we understand that, that this what is going to take place in these scriptures today, the unity and the love and the sharing began with somebody willing to sacrifice and allow their talents, their resources to be used by God. And in doing that, they were also willing to testify what God had done for them. And in that testimony, it was able to bring the, the people of God to believe on the power of God and then begin to worship God and the things that he had done. Um, what I'd like to uh, bring out is that the movement that is about to take place in the scripture does not take place in the perfect uh, scenario. Uh, this movement that is about to take place and the growth that is happening by the church is happening in a time of persecution. One thing that I think is key uh, that, that, I, that I like in the text is the fact that we see that God is moving. The Holy Spirit is still working even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of perilous times in the body of Christ. The word of God is still acting and the body is still being advanced. And, and God's people are still being taken care of. And so we need to hold on to that today because we live in some perilous times right now. We have some things that are going on in our society with the, the, the COVID-19, uh, with, with us being isolated, uh, with churches trying to, to figure out how to continue to share the word of God. This gives us hope in this lesson today to realize that, that God is still moving even in the midst of things around us that may not be ideal. Even in the midst of the weather around us not being ideal and, and the atmosphere not being uh, that that we think is conducive for production, God is still moving. And so uh, when we look at this text, the people have, uh, uh, someone has sacrificed their talents. Uh, someone has witnessed to the power of God and what God had done for them. And because of that sacrifice and witness, then there are those that are able to believe on Jesus Christ and begin to worship Jesus Christ. And look what takes place when they begin to worship. Uh, in chapter 4, they begin to worship God and then they come and the power of the Holy Spirit comes on them. And when, whenever we begin to, to sacrifice 
to testify to the to the power of God and and believe in worshiping God, then the Holy Spirit can come in and do so, a mighty work. And so the Holy Spirit comes in and it enables them to be in unity. And don't miss that. The Holy Spirit, the power of God has allowed them to be in unity. And that's key for this lesson today also, that we can be in unity if we operate under the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to have its way in our own lives and also in the lives of our community and the lives of our churches. Uh, if we allow ourselves to operate under the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be in unity. Uh, this lesson teaches us the power we have in unity even in these adverse circumstances. And so we learn that there is power in unity through this lesson, even in adverse circumstances. As we go through the scriptures, just keep those things in mind, the power of unity, uh, how precious unity is to God, and, and what the, the extent that God will go to keep that unity within the body. And we should have that same mindset of the extent that we are willing to go to make sure that we stay in unity that we sacrifice, and that we also are willing to testify to what God has done for us in our lives. Uh, when we look at the first section, it's Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37, uh, keeping and sharing in love, and that's that's what this, this group of scriptures exemplify. It exemplifies the body of Christ coming together, uh, the believers coming together in unity and sharing because of the love that they have because of the saving grace and the Holy Spirit that lives inside of them of Jesus Christ. Uh, the early church had a willingness to unite their resources by sharing what they had to benefit the community. The Bible says that, that they begin to give and sell their possessions and bring them to the leadership of the church and allow those things to be used to meet the needs of those that were less fortunate in the community. Uh, because they were united, they recognized that every resource that they had was also a resource that those that were united with them under the umbrella of Christianity, under the umbrella of the belief of Jesus Christ, that those resources were also to be used to help those that were in need. And so they had a willingness to, to, to sell those things that they had, and they all brought them together, and they combined their resources in unity. And that was because of that combination, they were able to provide for everyone in the community. And um, they share and received according to the need. In other words, they were not they were not greedy and excessive in what they took. They shared according to the need, and they received according to the need. And because of that, then every need was met. Um, in the past, in our communities uh, and families have survived and thrived because of this principle. Uh, when we look at our, our, our parents and the generations before us, they were able to survive because they were willing to unite their resources and bring it together to meet the needs of the community. Uh, we used to live in communities to where if one house didn't have something, they were able to 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 be able to, someone would lend them uh, the things that they needed to survive. We worked together and shared our resources. Uh, that way everybody could have their needs met. And so that's not a bad principle and that's a principle that we continually need to teach. Uh, that's a principle that contradicts uh, the concept of the mainstream today. Uh, the worldly concept and the worldly way of thinking today, but it's a principle that is a godly principle that still works today, today, that we can come together in unity. We can pull our resources as a community. We can pull our resources as the body of Christ. We can pull our resources as a family, and we can meet the needs that are out there if we're willing to unify uh, the things and resources that we have. And so that's something that we we, we, we need to, to continue to teach the upcoming generations that there is power in unity and that we have survived uh, through the years because of us being able to unify our resources and work together to make sure that all the needs were met in the community. And that's what the people of God and the early church was doing. And that's what allowed them to continue to advance. Um, we can only overcome the selfish, competitive, and greed mentality by prayer and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That brings us 
into that unity. And we need to teach that today, uh, that the only way that we can overcome the, the, the ideology of the world today, of it's all about me, uh, the competitiveness, and, and also the greed mentality of taking more than what we need is by prayer. And, the, and by allowing the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the early church came under unity because they allowed themselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we need to do the same today. If we want to be able to operate as a body of Christ in unity, then we have to allow ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? We follow the blueprint of this early church. We allow ourselves to, be, first of all, sacrifice our talents sacrifice the things that God and resources that God has given us to further the kingdom, to help those that are in need. And then those that receive that help, uh, we learn to testify to what God has done for us. And when we testify what God has done for us, those that are around us will become to believe and also become to continually worship God for what he has done. Then we're able to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And once we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we'll have the power to be able to join in unity and continue to grow and further the kingdom agenda. And so that's what the lesson is teaching us today. That's what we learn in these first few scriptures uh, of the text is that the people of God are able to come together and use their resources because they have the, the unity and the like mindedness because they're unified in their belief in Jesus Christ and they're unified in their worship. They're unified in their in their in feeling of the Holy Spirit. And so they are able to be willing to give to those that are in need, to give of their own personal possessions, to give of their own self, to sacrifice, and then also uh, to tell what God has done for them. Uh, when we look at the, lex the second set of scriptures, we see a contrast, a contrast between holiness and a contrast between hypocrisy. And that's chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. We saw what took place whenever the body of Christ came under unity, pulled their resources together. They were able to meet the needs of the community. But now we see, uh, one, how important it is uh, for the body of Christ to stay in unity and how important it is to, to, to God for us to stay in unity and the, and the lengths that he will go to make sure that that unity of the body of Christ is not threatened. In this section, we see the importance of that unity and how the Holy Spirit and the early church dealt with the threat of division. The Bible tells the story of Ananias and Sapphira. So they sold some land, and, and when they sold some, some of the land that they owned, they could rightfully sell. They kept some of the money for themselves, but presented a portion of the proceeds to the apostles as if they were donating it at all. It was not the fact that they kept some of the profit. It was the hypocrisy and deceitfulness that they were sacrificing all to appear to be generous. So um, basically, Ananias and Sapphira, they sold some of their land. They saw the people giving. They saw the recognition that they were giving because of the, the giving that they were doing out of their pure heart. And so they go and sell some of their land, but they decide to keep some of it to themselves. There's nothing wrong with them wanting to do that. Uh, what where they where they erred in is the deceitfulness is when they brought what they portion that they were going to give to the to the to the church or give uh, to the, to the apostles. They laid down and they they did it under the false pretense that they were given all. Also, uh, it was hypocrisy and it was deceitful that they were sacrificing all, and so that's where they erred in what they did. Uh, and, and, and Peter tells them that he says, you know, that you could have kept it for yourself because it was yours. There wasn't a problem in that. If you decided that you wanted to keep what you sold for yourself, the problem with it is, is that you came and laid it down before us, uh, as if you were sacrificing it for the whole. And what that did was, is that caused, uh, the faith of those that were, that were witnessing this to be, uh, to be questioned. Uh, it also, it also caused them to, it caused us to question the integrity of the gifts of those. And that's what happens in the body of Christ when we don't do things with a pure heart and with pure motives. It causes other, those that are around us to question the integrity of what is taking place. And so um, 
in that, in them doing that, what God does is the Holy Spirit strikes Ananias dead on the spot. Um, and then he gives the opportunity for uh, Sapphira's his wife to come in and actually uh, own up to it. She could have repented for what had been done, but she decided to hold true to the lie. And so she also was stricken dead. And so that lets us know how far God will go to make sure that the integrity and the motives of the giving and the unity of the body of Christ and the body of believers is kept uh, because he will go as far as to take somebody out if they're willing to threaten or if there are a threat to the integrity and the faith of those that are in the body of Christ. He will take us out if we are a threat to the unity to the body of Christ. Um, it lets us know that when we are willing to give, uh, when we are giving, we should give freely and we should give with pure motives. We should give out of love. And so if we give out of love, if we give with the motive of sharing out of love and in unity, then we don't have to worry about um, uh, hypocrisy. We don't have to worry about selfishness. But it, um, it's not, we should give not out of personal gain or out of, of wanting recognition for ourselves, which is what uh, Ananias and Sapphira is arid in. But we should give out of love for our brothers and sisters. And, and, and the key here is, is if we allow ourselves to be guided and filled with the Holy Spirit, then we will be able to give. We will be able to give out of love and we will be able to give out of pure motives and for the right reason. Uh, we should give honestly and without hypocrisy. Uh, we should give uh, what our heart has allowed us to give or what our heart is telling us to give or what the Holy Spirit leads us to give. And we should not do it out of hypocrisy um, for alternative motives, but we should do it because we do want to unify the body of Christ. We should do it in love because we care for those. We should do it sacrificially because we are united and we are joined with, with, with God through Jesus Christ who gave sacrificially. Uh, we should give because we are unified by our union with Christ. And so when we look at these two uh, very different ways of giving, Barnabas gave out of his, um, he gave out of his heart. He gave out of love. He gave because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He gave with the spirit of unity to help those that were in need. And because of that, God was able to elevate him. Because of that, uh, the church was able to to further because because Peter and John were willing to sacrifice uh, the talents that they had was willing to sacrifice the time and was willing to to share and love the gifts that God had given them. They were able to heal a lame man because that lame man was willing to testify to what God had done for them. Then those that were around them were able to become believers and were able to worship God and they were able to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And because they, everything was done with a pure motive of unity and advance in the kingdom, then they were able to come together in unity and they were able to meet the needs of the community. But the contrast to that is, is when uh, Ananias and, and Sapphira were willing, were, were giving out of alternative motives, were given out of hypocrisy, uh, were given because they had alternative motives of wanting recognition, uh, they threaten the unity of the body. And anytime we come and we minister to God or we share our talents because we want rec recognition or because of out of, of deceit, uh, then we threaten the unity of the body. We threaten the witness of giving and uh, we threaten the faith of those that are around us. And so we have to be careful to make sure that we show up in the house of God with the right mindset of unity, of love. And of giving and sharing uh, out of the will of God, out of being filled with the Holy Spirit, with a pure motive. And if we do that, then we're able to do a mighty work in our community. Uh, when we look at this text, there are some key points as we study that I want you to look at. One, the early church in history has proven that when we are as the body of Christ, pray when we unify and are filled with the Holy Spirit, we can pull our resources to provide for those in our communities, to provide for those in our families, and to provide for the churches so that every need is met. We have all that we need to take care of any issue that takes place in our churches, in our communities, and in our families if we're willing to pool our resources together uh, for the good of those that are in need. 
uh, we have more power unified. That's why the, the, the biggest scheme of the enemy is to separate and isolate us. Because if he can keep us separated, then he can limit our power. But as those in the body of Christ, we understand that we are unified through our union with Christ. And that the Holy Spirit can work through us. And if we are able to work in unity on one accord, then we can accomplish mighty things, even in the midst of parallel times, even in the midst of adversity. Second thing I want us to look at is the Holy Spirit takes the unity and faith of the body seriously and remove anything that threatens it. Uh, when we look at Ananias and Sapphira and, and what took place, we understand that God takes it serious when those that threaten the unity of the body of Christ. He takes it serious. He understands that the unity of those of the believers, the love that we share to one another is so important to us being successful to his church being successful, to his mission being to successful, that he will take out those that come in with alternative motives or that come in in deceit or that threaten that unity between believers. God will take them out because it's serious to him. He understands that unity is necessary for us to grow and for us to accomplish the things that the Holy Spirit desires for us to accomplish as believers. And so uh, keep that in mind that we always consecrate our minds and our hearts and be under submission to the Holy Spirit, that we have the mindset and the will to be in unity when we come together, to be in unity in our families, in our communities, and also to be in unity in our church, in the body of Christ. Um, the last thing that I want us to make sure that we, we, we look at in this text as you study, we should give out of love with pure motives and not out of hypocrisy because we are unified by our union with Christ who gave the ultimate sacrifice on Calvary. The early church was willing to give because they were understood that they were unified because of Christ and the sacrifice that he made. Christ gave it all and he gave it all because he loved. He was willing to share of himself uh, and, and, and think it not robbery to take on the form of a man simply because he loved us, simply because he was in unity with the Holy Spirit and in unity with his Father. And he encourages us and he set his church up to follow that blueprint and that mold, to be in unity, to give sacrificially, to love unconditionally. And that's what we do when we share in love. We love unconditionally because of Christ, the way Christ loved us and we're willing to meet the needs of others. We're willing to give of our talents. And so I encourage us to do that today, to understand that even though we are in struggling times right now, we can be encouraged and we don't have to worry because if we come together in unity and we pull our resources to meet the needs, then we, God will give us everything we need to survive and not only survive, but advance the kingdom and, and have the things that we need. And no one will be without if we're willing to come in unity. And we can only come in unity if we yield and allow ourselves to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And so I encourage us that today that we allow ourselves to come into unity, be filled by the Holy Spirit, sacrifice, pray, and then also be willing to share the things that God has given us with others. And when we receive the goodness of God, that we testify to what God has done for us. And if we continue to do that, then the church will continue to grow. Our families will continue to grow. Our communities will continue to grow and have the things that they need. And everyone will needs will be met and no one will be without. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the day. Thank you, Lord God, for a foolproof blueprint that allows us to be successful even in times of apparel, even in times where we're dealing with things. Lord God, your word lets us know that we can be successful if we allow ourselves to come together in unity and pool our resources. If we share with one another in love, if we share with one another the common bond of being unified in Christ and willing to sacrifice for the good of the whole, Lord God, then you will give us those resources and you will fill the needs of our communities, of our churches, and of our families, Lord God. We thank you for that and we praise you for that right now, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to come together in unity. Help us to give freely out of the right motives, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to understand the, the, the seriousness and the necessity of unity, Lord God. 
and help us, Lord God, to continue to further that unity and to further the love and the sharing that they did in the early church, to understand that you will allow us to provide even in the midst of this storm. Lord God, we give you all the honor, we give you the praise, and we give the glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.